The skills team at the University Library have produced an approved template that you can use for your undergraduate dissertation or independent project. You may have been given access to a template via your Canvas site, but if not, you'll need to get it from the University Library's web pages. From the Library homepage, go to the Help section and click on Study Skills Support. From there, click on Online Skills Guides and then in the Technology and Software section, select Microsoft Office Software. Choose the MS Word option. All the available templates are found at the top of this page. You'll see a link to the undergraduate final year project and dissertation template. Just click on that link and it will start to download. Notice that there is a guidance document on the right hand side. This has got step by step instructions if you prefer to use those rather than following the videos. Once the template has downloaded, just click on the link at the bottom and it will open a new document based on that template. So this video will demonstrate using the basic generic template. If you have downloaded your template from a Canvas module, then there may be some slight customizations and it may look a little bit different to this one, but it should still be fairly easy to work out what you need to do. So the front page of all of the templates has got um, various things that you can fill in. You can either type them in directly or choose from the drop down lists. So if I just start enable editing on here, that will allow me to actually click into the document and put in some information. So it starts off with the title of your uh, research. So I'm going to put my amazing research project. And then some things, as I say, you choose from a drop down list. So this I have to choose whether it's an independent project or a dissertation. I can say whether I'm doing a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science. I then just need to enter the name of my degree. So I'm going to put in politics. And then just my name and the month and year that I'm intending to submit. At the bottom of this page, you will see an example of some explanatory notes. These are just there to help you as you work through the document. Obviously, you want to make sure you've deleted them all before you submit, which is why we put this red line down the side so it's really easy to note which is the text that needs deleting. When you delete it, it's very important not to delete the hidden section breaks that are at the bottom of some pages. As you can see, there is a warning about this on this page. When you're ready to delete the explanatory notes, it's a good idea to put the show hide option on. This shows all of the characters that don't print in your document. And you can see there, it's quite easy to see that section break now. So if I wanted to delete this blue text, I just select over it, delete it, and the section break remains. You can toggle these non-printing characters on and off just by using that show hide button. It's very important that you keep those section breaks because they have got a lot of the formatting information embedded within them. For example, this document has got four different types of page numbering throughout it and each of the section breaks is in charge of the page numbering for that section. So you can see this front page has no page numbers on it at all. And then when I go to the front matter, uh, the next page, 
you'll see that's got lowercase Roman numerals. And you'll see as I scroll through the document later how they have different types of numbering at different points in the document. So this section at the beginning has got various bits of optional information that you can include. Um, it's also got some things that are fairly standard and should be included. So for example, acknowledgements um, would need to be in there. You would normally acknowledge at least your supervisor. They are marking it after all and you want to keep them sweet. Then there is the abstract. This does need to stay included. And you can see it's got um, just a single page for the abstract. You should try and keep this a single page summary of your um, research project. If you do need to switch it back to single line spacing, then you can do so in order to keep it on one page. If you don't change, it will just be in one and a half line spacing like the rest of the document. It is then typical to have your contents page and I will show you how this can be automatically updated to include all of the headings in your document in the next video. There's a space for a list of figures. There's a space for a list of tables. There are then some suggestions for other front matter headings. You don't need to include any of these, but if you do think they would be useful, then go ahead and include them at the beginning of your document. And you'll then see we go into chapter one of your document proper. That has got normal Arabic style numbering on it. At the very end of the document, if I scroll down quickly, you'll see there's a place for your reference list and bibliography, which keeps within the same numbering system, and then a space for any appendices that you may need at the end, which goes to uppercase Roman numerals in its numbering system. So that's what the template looks like. The next video will look at using the inbuilt styles to format your document and then update that table of contents.